What is up guys, it is Ozzy from Ozzy Hardware and here with me is a $250 gaming PC that I built for a $250 gaming PC competition. Now this competition has been in the works since about July uh, with me and four other tech YouTubers but we finally made it happen recently and we're super excited to share our results with you guys. Now before I continue, I definitely recommend you guys checking out the other competitors' computer builds. Uh, we have Matt and Jackson from uh, Toasty Bros, we have Danny from Nerd on a Budget, we have Mark from Scatterbolt and then we have Matt by Tech by Matt. So before going on, I definitely recommend you guys go over to their channels and check out their portion of this competition as well. I also have Brian from Tech City. Uh, he will be judging our computers based on price and performance. So definitely check him out as well and give him some love too. He's a pretty cool guy. Uh, he's taking his time uh, out of his schedule to help us out. So we're really appreciative about that and we would love it if you guys could show your appreciation as well. Also, it's pretty good to note that this was inspired by Scrapyard Wars from the LMG company. So hats off to them for inspiring us and starting the trend. It's also good to note as well that Austin Evans just did his own kind of Scrapyard Wars-esque video slash series. So uh, that definitely motiva motivated us to get the ball rolling a little bit quicker. So definitely check them out as well uh, before watching this video, if you can. All right, so if you're curious about the rules when it comes to the competition, I will put them in the description and you can kind of skim over them before watching the video but I will just get along with my build and the parts that I got, how I got them, and then the benchmarks and the results. All right, so for my CPU, I got the Xeon X3450. Uh, I got it for about 29 bucks on eBay, and I have it overclocked to 3.2 gigahertz in this $250 gaming PC. The reason I went for this is because I've used it before, the uh, exact same model, and I enjoyed the performance that it gave last time and its overclockability. And also, it's pretty much a hyper-threaded uh, eight core, and so you get eight cores for 29 bucks, and I can't really argue with that. Now to cool the X3450, I have the Deep Cool Gamma X, which I got for 19 bucks on eBay. It is the 200 model. Uh, it has a 120 millimeter fan, and I was able to actually push the CPU to 3.6 uh, stable, but it got kind of hot with this CPU cooler, so I bumped it down to 3.2, and it runs just fine uh, under 70 degrees load. Now the motherboard and the power supply I actually got as a bundle on Craigslist. The power supply is a Zephyr 750 watt 80 plus bronze power supply and the motherboard is an ASRock P55 Extreme model that supports Crossfire X and SLI, I think it's quad or three way. Now I got these two combined for about 60 bucks which is a really good deal. It was listed for 70 but I was able to talk it down to 60 bucks. Um, so basically about 30 for each, or maybe about 40, 20 if you try to even it out. But for 60, 60 bucks for a motherboard and a pretty solid power supply, um, I was stoked about that because it fit in the budget really, really well. Actually better than I had hoped. Now the RAM is one 8 gigabyte module, uh, DDR3, that I got for 15 bucks on Craigslist as well. Uh, pretty much the cheapest RAM I could find at the price. And 15 bucks also fit really well into the budget. Now for the storage, I got a one terabyte hard drive for about 30 bucks on eBay. I could have gone cheaper. I could have actually gotten a 251 for about half the price, but I decided that, you know, I could use this hard drive for later, so I might as well just get it now. And one terabyte is pretty much the standard. So 30 bucks, it looks really, really nice. It's in a pretty good condition, and it's from Western Digital, which is pretty reliable. Now, as for the video cards, I have two GTX 470s, if you haven't already noticed. Uh, these were listed for 80 bucks on eBay. I mean, not on eBay, on Craigslist, but I was able to talk it down to 70 bucks for both of them. So these two are pretty awesome. They do consume a lot of power and generate a lot of heat, but uh, together, as an SLI function, their scaling is very, very good. Um, I did have some issues with a few of the benchmarking softwares that I used and some of the games, but overall, I was pleasantly surprised by how well these two things scale together. The case I don't have with me actually left it at home my plan was to benchmark everything and set it up and you know kind of use a breadboard system and then install it into the case and do b-roll that way but uh, I actually forgot the case the two times I went back home the last month so uh, it's back at home but it's a five dollar Antec case that was super cheap and I got I think at it was either Goodwill or Craigslist I can't remember but it was five bucks it was missing a side panel but I could use it anyway as for the operating system, I have Windows 10 64-bit. It is the unactivated version, so I didn't actually have to buy anything. It has lots of limitations, and I can only use it for a limited amount of time. 
but you know, for this scenario, it works very well. So the total is $231, if I did my math correctly, which is $19 under the budget, which is great. Um, I will go into the benchmarks right now so you guys can see what kind of performance you can get from a $250 gaming PC. I did have SLI issues with the Unigine Heaven 4.0, so I could not use SLI with that benchmarking sweep, but for everything else, SLI ran really, really well. Starting with uh, Cinebench R15, the CPU score went overclocked at 3.2 GHz with 486. When I ran the OpenGL test, the average FPS with both 470s installed was 109.22 FPS. Now, like I mentioned before, I had issues with Unigine Heaven 4.0 when using SLI, so I could only use one GPU here, but my average was about 26 FPS, and my minimum was about 10, and my score was 696. When it came to Shadow of Mordor, the SLI scan was also really good. I believe when I ran it with one GPU, I averaged around 31 FPS, but with two, I almost doubled that. I had a 59.3 average and a 28.4 minimum. Now, GTA 5 was more of a shocker to me because I did not expect the 470s to perform as well as they did. Uh, with one 470, I was averaging about 58 FPS. With two, I was averaging 86. So the scaling here is pretty good. That's about 1.7 to 1.75, and I'm pleasantly satisfied with that. But overall, for 200 to 250 bucks, you can get yourself a pretty solid gaming PC that can play current games at 1080p. You just have to kind of tweak the settings around a little bit. I'm pretty satisfied with the Sky that I built. It's a pretty solid PC, and I would definitely do it again. Um, again, like I mentioned before, definitely check out the other competitors and see how they compare to me. Uh, choose which one you like the best, let me know in the comments below, and uh, definitely check out Brian's take on it. Uh, his will be uploaded soon, it won't be uploaded at the time of this upload. But yeah, um, thank you guys for watching, I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Oh, also, the winner of the Deep Cool CPU Cooler is Jesus. A from Fontana, California. I will be emailing you shortly, so check your email within the next 48 hours and I will send you um, the CPU cooler. Yeah, and that was actually the last thing I'm gonna say. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.